Hello everyone. Today we are going to be covering the installation, configuration, and setup of the CenterStack server for one of the most popular use case, mobile and remote access to Windows File Server without VPN. As you can see here, we're going to be installing a CenterStack server behind a firewall, and then it's going to be connecting to the local area network for the file server and for the Active Directory. So now let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is to go and download the software. And then prior to that, I assume that you have a clean Windows 2012 R2 machine or Windows 2012 um, or 2008 R2. Those are the three um, supported platform for production use. So clean machine is very important because that ensures the most smooth uh, installation experience. So now let's go ahead and download the software. So the whole solution is built on top of the Microsoft Windows web platform. So that includes the IIS, the .NET, and WCF. And as you can see, the installer has been downloaded to the Windows 2012 R2 machine, and it's pretty small, 7 meg. So that means it's a web-based installation that it's going to pull down additional components as required to set it up. So as we can see, we start the installation 9.25 in the morning. So it's 9.27 now. And you can see by the end of installation, it's only going to take about 10 minutes. Uh, we're not going to be waiting for all the 10 minutes here. Um, so there's some video editing to cut it short because we're going to be covering the installation, configuration, and a lot more stuff. So we don't want to waste time waiting for it. But I'm going to, at the end of installation, pull up the, the clock again to show you how quick and how easy it is to set up the center stack solution. As you can see here, it's just, you know, a few clicks, you know, next, 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 uh, start, and then it will start installate, installation. And then there's a grid view, some rows and different components will be installed one by one uh, sequentially. And then at the end of it, um, you know, so it's 10 minutes, so it's time to go up and get a cup of coffee and come back. So, um, we, for the video editing, we cut it short, so, um, so it looks like it's super fast, but um, it's going to take about 10 minutes. So at the end of it, um, a re reboot is required. As if, if you take a look at the clock, it's about you know, 20, you know, 9, 9.35 or you know, 9.36-ish. So it's about 10 minutes, right? So um, depending on your, on your network speed, because uh, it's going to pull down some installation packages from network and your hard drive speed, right? It's going to you know, expand some zip files. So now we are configuration. The reboot has been done. And after reboot, a web portal is going to pull up. So this web-based configuration. So the only question it's going to be asking you is the, you know, what's the default admin's um, email and password. So now, because you are the default admin, the cluster admin, so it pops you into the cluster admin interface. Um, for today's session, we're going to be focusing on connecting the Active Directory and connecting the file server. So I will not go into the details of how the cluster admin uh, web portal work. So you just know you, it's a place you can set up the branding, the name, and other um, parameters for the solution here. Now you're going into the tenant admin portal. So the Active Directory is kind of like a per tenant concept in a multi-tenant system. So every single tenant may have or multiple Active Directories to connect to. So that's the one we are interested today um, to set up a connection to the Active Directory. There's also a web portal file manager. So it's kind of three different levels of privilege, the cluster admin, the tenant admin, and then the web portal. So now we bring back the Visio diagram that we're going to be connecting to the Active Directory and also connecting to the file server now. So this is the tenant admin functionality. So let's go there and set up the Active Directory settings. So we do, we do have a 
an Active Directory server at the specific location. So just use the IP address for now to connect to it uh, to make it easy. And then the, the friendly domain name will be the name you see in the Active Directory tools, the Microsoft tools. Typically, it's at the top of the tree view. Um, so that's it. It's set up. And then now let's do a sanity check to make sure that the Active Directory is set up. There's multiple ways to do sanity check, but the, you know, the one way I personally I prefer is to just use the user manager and then do a you know, search in the domain and then you know for name contains just so that so that I can see the users active directory users that are in the active directory so now um, you know we are going to be setting up a new active directory user um, just to so that you know everything is clear um, so you know in reality the active directory users will be uh, pre-existing existing right so then um, you know, you don't really need to create a new user, but if you are just the first time setting up the solution, you may want to just, you know, set up a, a new user like I do here and just test it out. Maybe you want to follow step by step as I am doing here. Um, that may be the easiest thing to do to, um, to get familiar, you know, with the solution here. So um, today is, you know, May 27th. So I just create a user called test in the 0527 and then um, create a user here. You know, I, you know for, for, for a normal user, you probably just don't want to click the password never expire, but for a test user, you know, it may be the easiest thing uh, for testing purposes. So now the user has been created. Um, so now we need to set up some file server share and home directory. So this is the active directory server. So for convenience, I also set it up as a file server. So I'm setting up a share called the test share 0527, a brand new share. And it's again, you know, it's you, you're installing this into an existing infrastructure. So you have the share already, but you know, when you are new to a solution, you probably just test it out on a test share just to understand what the solution can do. So I would recommend you may just follow you know, my steps here and create a new test share uh, to test it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is to um, enable that and turn it into a network share. So once I turn it into a network share, then I can connect to it from the center stack server. and then I can publish it as a team folder to the Active Directory users. Um, so I'm going to create two different folders, allowed folder, and then I'm going to be creating another folder called a denied folder. And you, you may, you may you know, have already guessed what I want to do here. I want to show you the native NTFS permission that's um, going to be used in center stack. So you can honor the NTFS permission 100%. You know, allowed A's, you know, the denied A's, it's all going to be uh, honored. Um, so native integration there, thanks to the Microsoft web platform. Uh, it's also very natural for that. So let's um, add the uh, change the denied folder. So we are going to take away you know, all the permissions from the denied folder. So then for the user, we just created the user will not have any access to the denied folder. So we're just setting it up, right? So um, if you're just testing it, um, first time setting it up, you can just follow this video and do exactly the same thing as I did. And you know, so then you can understand how the solution, the capabilities and uh, how you can connect to your file server shares for the user. So now we're going to be setting up a user home directory. So this step is optional because not, um, not all the companies you know, leverage the, the home directory feature in Active Directory, but we are going to be setting it up anyway. Um, it's also optional in center stack, so um, you don't have to, but you just do it here. So then you, you understand you know, if you want to do it, you know, how you can get it done. So. So for now, we are um, changing this you know, user share into you know, assign it to all the domain users. Um, and then under the user shared folder, we are going to be creating home directories for the user. 
So, um, so two things, right? One is the file server share, one is the home directory share. So we are just doing the setup work. Um, just pretend I'm a new, um, I'm, I'm new to the solution here and I want to test it out, the file server share connection and test it out, the uh, user home directory connection. So what I'm doing now here is I'm setting up the user's home directory under the profile tab. Uh, so pointing to you know, connect Z drive to you know, a place, right? So typically this is done by Windows, you know, when the first time an Active Directory user logs in, then there's a, you know, there's a Z drive on the Windows machine pointing to his home directory. So that's the active, native Active Directory home directory feature. So, um, so far we are still setting it up on the Windows side because um, later on we are going to see how Center Stack, you know, connect into these, the whole, you know, Windows infrastructure and make it like seamless. So um, creating a file. So this file is kind of like a marker file. So as long as I can see this file, then I know I'm looking at the user's home directory. You know, otherwise, it's going to be empty for testing purposes. I don't know, you know where, which is where. So it's kind of leave a mark there. So now I think everything is set up. The user is set up. The file server share is set up. The user's home directory is set up. So everything is ready to go to move back to center stack. So we, we are going to be adding a user. So, um, so for now, I'm adding the user explicitly uh, by doing the add functionality in user manager, but you don't have to. So if you have you know, a thousand Active Directory users, you can have the implicit version. So the user accounts can be provisioned you know, on demand when, when, you know, when they are logging in. So that's a benefit. So, so this is optional, right? So publish user's home drive. So that means we are going, going to be connecting to the uh, Active Directory uh, property, the home, you know, home drive, home directory property. And so now the user is created and created in an explicit way. So now we are going to be connecting the file server here. So, so it's I mean, everything under collaboration, right? So it makes sense, right? So the, you want to connect the storage because you know you want to later on publish it as a team folder for collaboration purposes. So the whole thing, center stack is about collaboration. It's about you know elevating the file server, Windows file server into the cloud, so you can continue to access the file, you know, Windows file server with native permission, you know, on iPhone, on Android, on you know, web browsers. So now let's see. Um, we want to connect the you know, files over share. So let's just grab the um, the files over share from the the server. So do a you know, copy and paste. So then it's you know easiest to not introduce any um, any typos. So it's easy. And we're also going to be enable the versioning. You know, so we want to check and making sure always access the storage using the logon user's identity. That means pass through authentication to NTFS. Um, so now let's publish it as a team folder. So you can add the existing user or you can add, you know, you know active directory user. So uh, you can prefer to do that, right? So, but we are not going to do that because um, I, I'm going to show you how to do it using active directory. So that's something you can do. You can add the user explicitly or you can add the user implicitly um, via some kind of a group membership. So for example, I'm going to publish this team folder to domain users. So team folder from the concept level is similar to a network share. So it's just like an extension of network share to the you know, wide area network to the cloud. So now we've published this you know, test share um, to the domain users. So now um, we can go out of the, the virtual machine here now um, and we can test it out the you know the test user we've created. So now let's see. Um, we have um, this. The whole testing is in the local area network, right? So potentially, if I put and this onto the onto the web, give it a don't you know DNS name, then SSL, then I can open this up to um, to the you know to the web front, right? So then. For now, for all the testing purposes, it's done in the local area network. So I'm using IP address directly. So as you can see here, this is 
test 0527 Honda. This file is showing up. So what does that mean? So I mean, this is a marker file, right? So if I see that file, I mean, we are looking at the user's home directory. And this is my home directory, right? So that's cool. And now also we seeing this folder that um, the share folder. So allowed folder, fine. I can click into it. And the deny folder, I can click into it, but I cannot access it, right? Is that your um, expected behavior? Sometimes you say, yes, I want the folder to be visible, but you know people will know explicitly they cannot access it. But some admin may be saying, hey, you know, if it, you know, the user doesn't have permission, um, why not just hide it, right? So let's go ahead and let's try to hide it. So go to, um, I think, under folders and storage. So then say, don't show folder that user doesn't have read permission. So let's check that and see what's you know, going to happen for the, our test user here. So we do a refresh, the denied folder disappeared, right? So, so, so which, you, you know, which way you want to do, and it's all doable, you can control that by policy. Um, so now let's continue to do some testing here. So let's upload the file. So upload the file, so we are looking at the user's home directory, right? So in the web portal. Um, so for today's session, I'm showing everything done from the web portal, but you know, whatever you're seeing in the, in the web portal is the same you will see in iOS, in Android, in a remote Windows client. So it's all the same, it's just the you know, same presentation. Um, so now we just upload the file into the home directory. So let's go find it. Um, so that's user's home directory and that should be under uh, user shared, right? So user shared, find that, and then let's you can see that the file is right there, right? So, so what, what did we just do? We we upload the file over a web browser. The web browser could be in a remote location, and then these files ended up in the user's home directory, right? So that means the user has more productivity now. He can use his own Active Directory identity uh, credential, you know, securely upload the file over the internet into his home home directory, right? So that's all good. So now let's add two lines. So um, so the user may be coming back to the, the, the office now and then he modify the um, that you know via the local area network. So now these two files shows up, right? So whatever he modified locally can also you know be accessed from remote locations in a web browser, right? So now after testing the you know user home directory, now let's test the share. So now we are getting into the share. So now it's the sharing folder. We are also uploading a file to the share folder. Um, so let's you know check it out and see. So um, we need to go back to the file server now. And let's see. That's where's our test share folder. That's the share folder, the allow folder. And now you see the file is showing up, right? So you upload to a shared um, network share. So you know, traditionally, you can only access the network share via Windows client, right? So SMB protocol. But now you can access it from web browser, iOS, and other remote locations without VPN. And you know, even better, now you have version control too, right? So you have version control for your for your um, network share now, uh, explicit share, right? So you can see if you were to inspect what the the version control is done, uh, you can see the head versions are SES, and then there's a, like an underscore ver kind of a hidden folder that uh, stores the the past version, right? So now you have, can have explicit version control um, that exposed over the um, the internet. So. So then you can have an you know, iOS laptop over the firewall to access your files and folders via the center stack server. So that's why you know the center stack server is called the center stack. It's at the center of the software stack, right? So it connects left to right, right to left, and then just brokerage the transactions, the active directories and file servers. And then for the file servers, you may have two different type of you know functionality. One is the like the company file server, file server share. And the other type is the the personal personal home directories. So um, so in today's demonstration, we demonstrate both the file server share and also the user's home directory. And then the home directory is optional. So 
um, it's up to you if you want to set it up. So as a quick summary, this is how mobile and remote access without VPN is done with CentOS Tech Server. Thank you very much.